Hi students, welcome to session 1 of water and its importance. Students, in today's session we are going to learn about water. As you are familiar with this term, let me first introduce, let me first teach you the introduction part of water. What is water? What is the importance of water? Yes, we know very well that all living things need water to survive. There is no doubt that water is important. Not only do we humans use it just about every day, but every living thing needs it to live. It has helped from, from the earth as we know it and it covers over 70% of the earth. Even where there is land, much of it is covered in ice, which is obviously just solid form of water. So, the importance of water is clear to us in many ways and we can't overlook it. So, let us start with the introductory slide of water. Yes, water is everywhere and it is very important to the earth and the life inhabiting it, including us. Our earth seems to be unique among the other known celestial bodies because it has water which covers three-fourths of its surface and constitutes 60 to 70 percent or 60 to 70 weight percent of the living world. So, just imagine your life without water. Where would be people be without water? Well, aside from you know not being alive, we may never have evolved the big brains that make us such a unique species. Some say that, that learning how to keep and transport water over land was the key to our survival, when other similar species just kept dying off. How about the importance of water in shaping the earth? At some point or another, it is likely that where you are sitting right now was also covered in water millions or billions of years ago. It may have been under the vast oceans that once spread further than they do today, or they may have been buried under as much as mile of glacier. So at that time, glaciers formed the largest lakes, the Great Lakes, and they are responsible for craving or carve, sorry for carving mountains into the shapes that we know today. So did you know that water is also a part, a very large part of weather patterns? Yes, it is. And based on that, the water availability on Earth is divided in this way that oceans today form 97 percent and fresh water is available only 3 percent to us. So this is 97 percent and rest of it means fresh water is only 3 percent. So only a tiny fraction of Earth's water is available for human use. Human use means out of 3% of fresh water, scrounged water is comprised of 0.003%, while ice caps and glaciers they comprise this fresh water about 2.997 percent so just imagine that if there were 100 liters of water available on the earth then only 0.003 liters that is about half teaspoon. So, if there were 100 liters of water available on earth, on the earth, 
only 0.03% could be available for human use. How frightening it is. So total, that means readily available fresh water for human use is just 0.003%. That means that most of the water that is about 97% that is in the oceans and seas as salt water. Just remember this. That 97% of water is in the form of seas and oceans which is also termed as salt water. This one, the oceans, right? So this is salt water and rest of the 3% which is just a tiny fraction that is only 3% means for the human use out of that also only 0.003% is for human use thus we can say that this water is too salty the oceans water the salt water is too salty to be used for drinking and irrigation thus only a tiny fraction of the earth's water is available to us as fresh water and out of this 2.997% is logged up in the ice caps or glaciers or is buried so deep under that it costs too much to extract. So only about 0.003% of the fresh water is easily available to us as groundwater. In which form? Yes crowned water. Besides this, it is also available to us in the form of rivers, lakes, streams, soil moisture and water vapor. So this is about our earth, the water planet. So about three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered with water. That is why Earth is also called the water planet. Aside from actually being part of the weather in the form of rain, sleet and snow, there are large bodies of water too that can keep a region's temperature milder than a location even just a few miles inland. Even humidity is also a large factor in weather. Humidity means it is the amount of water in the air. What is it? Humidity is the amount of water in the air. So, water is also a large part of weather patterns and as humidity is also a large factor in weather this can affect the temperature of the air close to a body of water so this means when the temperature of the air in one place is different from that in another you will also find a difference in pressure so these differences in pressure cause atmospheric movement and weather fronts. So water is important in this way too that it creates difference in temperature and pressure too which further causes atmospheric movement and weather fronts. Right? So that was about water availability on earth and somewhat we discussed about water. So basically just remember this that only 1% of the world's water or this is the approximate figure, the exact figure is 0.003% which we discussed. It, this world's water is usable to us as humans and about 97% is salty sea water and 2% is frozen in glaciers and polar ice caps. As the water available for use is very less for us, it is a necessary commodity for life. Why? 
as dehydration you all must be knowing about it dehydration means lack so sorry lack of water that will kill us faster than starvation which is lack of food since the plants and animals we eat also depend on water and lack of it could cause both dehydration and starvation too so the scenario gets worse water that looks drinkable can contain harmful elements which could cause illness and death if ingested so remember that besides our earth has water which covers about 60 to 70 weight percent of the living world water regenerates and redistributed it is redistributed through evaporation making it seem endlessly renewable this is somewhat amazing about water so now that was all about the introduction to water now let us discuss about about water which is also considered as an important natural resource yes students human body needs three requisites for its smooth functioning and that is oxygen water and food so our first requirement to live is oxygen since we cannot survive more than a few minutes without taking oxygen and water has been ranked as second only to oxygen as essential for life because we can stay for a few days without drinking water and then comes the food so human body needs three requisites in this order for its smooth functioning and human body is made up of two thirds of water and one third of solid matter out of which we can say that the average adult body weight is 55 to 75% water and a newborn baby's weight is 74% of water so basically human survival is dependent on water water is more important than matter for our body and the ratio of 2 is to 1 should be maintained every day ratio of 2 is to 1 this should be maintained every day every activity in the body is propelled by water and it is the water which is responsible for two third activity two third of activity in the body always remember that water is more important than matter for our body and it is the water which is responsible for the two third of activity in the body so the supply of all important water to the body helps it to perform its duties or functions perfectly maintaining good health there is no harm to the body even if we skip food once in a day the food stored in the body comes handy when we skip food however if we do not drink water for some time or for a whole day it triggers serious sorry it triggers serious trouble inside our body it is wrong to think that if we drink water once it will be stored for a long time just like a camel and it meets the needs of the human body but it is wrong it does not meet the needs of human body water is beneficial only when we take it whenever body needs it as food is emptied from stomach water is also emptied from the body to, from time to time so as we fill the empty stomach with food we must also supply water to the body so students if the body has to get full benefit of the food we eat it is possible only through water and other than consuming water for survival human beings also use water for a wide variety of purposes ranging from maintenance of hygiene to production of energy yes and that is known as hydro hydro power that means the power or the production of energy is because of water so the benefit to the body from the higher quantity and expensive food we eat is possible if the water we take is adequate nowadays man eats man sorry many varieties of food and yet his energy is low why 
If we reduce food intake by 50%, we can work more vigorously and can put in more hours of work unless we experience it for ourselves. We will not know about the benefit of consuming plenty of water. So if we are here to understand the need for more water, we should know as to where this three-fourths of water in our body exists and what form it takes and what it does, what is the difficulty the body faces when water level comes down and how much water is spent in, our, in the body, is used in our body, what are the likely symptoms when water level is reduced and what is the relation between kidneys and water, the relation of water to salt, etc. So remember that water is very important to us and drinkable water is found either in freshwater rivers or lakes or beneath the ground surface under the rocks in the soil which is called as groundwater. So remember that water which is for human use is also available from groundwater which we will discuss in the coming sessions. So water is a liquid that is essential for the survival of human beings and other living things. And water helps, it also helps the earth climate from getting too cold or too hot. As land absorbs as well as it releases heat quickly from the sun. But the ocean releases as well as it absorbs heat slowly from the sun. So gentle wind comes from the oceans and gives warmth to the land during winter as well as coolness during summer. Even to get rain, people worshipped rain gods as well as they pray for rain. Often when there is no rain, crops wither and starvation also occurs. And sometimes the rain falls too heavily or too suddenly. At this time rivers overflow and they cause massive property destruction. So some of the earth's water is contained within natural objects as well as man-made near the earth's surface such as food stores, manufactured products, plants and animal bodies as well as water towers. So as the demand grows for water, we will have to make better use of it. The more we learn about water, the better we will be able to meet this challenge of water which will be getting scarce in the coming years. So that was all about the introduction to water and importance of water. In the next session we will continue our lesson and we will learn more about water. Till then, enjoy, have fun and save water.